Welcome once again to this, the final video of this module. We're going to be in video 11 of uh, the third module. And yeah, let us jump in. So our starting point is just the ending points of last video. I have my uh, UI, which seems to be finished. But let me paint a picture for you, just to set us, set us up for this, uh, this video. Imagine that you were given projects like we had this project to complete and you worked on it all week and you just finished it and you're feeling really good and now it's, uh, it's Friday, it's maybe 4 p.m. and you're about to go home, you finished your work, it was great, so you're feeling good and then your boss comes in and says, hmm, but you know what, you made an app about makeup when 99% of your viewers are, um, are men. <laughs> So that seems a bit off. So your boss now says he doesn't like it. He wants you to change it, change all of it, change the colors, change, make it make it black, make it blue, make it about shaving or something like that. Uh, he's unhappy with this product. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Luckily, if you had clean architecture, if you followed some of my uh, my suggestions earlier, it's gonna be quite trivial to make those changes and make this into a different app. And that's the cool thing I was telling you about previously. If we do pull out the widgets the way we did, and if we are quite careful with how we build things, it can be extremely, extremely easy to change things later. And even more than that, if our boss does later come in on Monday and say, you know what, we're, we're an IT uh, thing, we need to be more inclusive, there aren't enough women, so actually cosmetics was totally the right thing, well, you can change it back really quickly. So that's great. So that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video. Uh, so we have our app here and let's start with the primary color. So let's say I want to have something much darker, like um, uh, a steel kind of blue thing. So let's try, and I haven't looked up these colors. So I'm just uh, trying random things. Let's try 50, 60, 80. That's 50 red, 60 green, 80 blue. That should give us quite a... Okay, so I just restarted the app because for some reason it wasn't changing. So yeah, we can see this uh, this color gave us a nice kind of steel, uh, steel blue, uh, a dark navyish blue. And notice that because we pulled out the primary color here and we use the same color in multiple places, it's updated, our icons is updated in this one as well, the background color. So that was a really quick, easy change. And we can do the same thing in the secondary color and this is gonna be the background color here. So I'm gonna give it a, a light blue kind of color or a light steel blue. So 245 and let's try something like 250. See if that looks good. Yeah, I think that looks decent. So I do want this to not be too obvious the same way it was before. And of course, if the, this was a larger app, the secondary color would have been used in a lot of different places. But for this particular one, we've only used it here. Uh, but you can see, I've changed the look of my app significantly already and I only changed two things. Uh, and then changing the rest is quite easy as well. So cosmetics that everyone loves, well, obviously I'm gonna to have to go into the text widget and we could just change this to the closest to shave, something like that. And notice that uh, because we used the layout builder and we used the constraints, when we did save this, it only takes one line and the images resize themselves. So again, that's one less thing to worry about. We don't have to manually go in and change everything, but now we have the images themselves that we have to we have to change. And there is something we did which was not quite perfect. Uh, if I go, if I find my images, and I'm passing the heights here, but if I go to my image tile, I gave my height to the image directly. So now this is gonna cause a bit of problems because, so going back to where I had my image tiles. First, let's just change the images. So I have some new ones over here. I can't remember <laughs> which ones I wanted to use where, to be honest. Uh, I think this one was razor. Then let's try shave. And of course the images will be uploaded to my GitHub and shave to save refresh. 
and some of them weren't found uh, because Razer is a JPEG, not a uh, not a PNG. Then Shave is also a JPEG, and same with Shave Two. And I used the PNG ending. That's why it didn't work. So now reloading them. The first one still didn't find it because uh, I had a one at the end. This is what I meant in a previous video when I told you guys you have to be very, very careful with the names of um, uh, of your files when using asset images or that kind of thing. But okay, now you see that because what I did wasn't so perfect previously, when I put in my images, it's going to cause an overflow error because these images are bigger, they're wider than the previous ones, and I'm only constraining it by the height. So what should I do now? How should I... How should I make this so it's always going to look uh, correct? Well, if I go down to my image tile, the first thing I'm going to do is wrap my image in a container. And instead of giving my height to the image, I'm going to give my height to the container. And save, just do a quick sanity check. It still does exactly what it should. And then I'm also going to give it a width of width. And of course, we don't have this yet. And for the width, we can do final double width. And give it a width here. So now when I go up to my here, image tiles. I can also give this a width of constraints dot max width times uh, point four five, for example. And I can't spell very well. And I'm going to do the same thing here and the same thing here. Save it, refresh it. I can play around with it a little bit more, maybe 0.4 here. Yeah, and by using the smaller size here, 0.4, but this is maybe a bit too small, 0.42. It was not <laughs> too small, turns out. Uh, I'm going to change this to 3.4 instead. Still too small, too big. Free, free. Okay. And now notice that because I have the height and the width, and because I have this inside the container, this time, if I wanted to change back to my previous images, which was makeup1.png, makeup2, makeup2.png, and makeup free.png, save this, refresh. This time that I have the container with a uh, with a specific height, and I've also given it uh, constraints on the width. Uh, it's neither, it's, it's not messing up the image, it's not making it stretched out, but at the same time, I'm able to change rapidly between these and you know, there's, there's no real difference. Uh, I can very quickly make these look the way I want them to look. And in this particular case, I haven't changed the padding, which maybe I should, but I'm gonna do it a bit quickly this time. So I'm just gonna switch back to the shaving pictures. And really the thing I'm trying to point out here is just how quickly we can switch between these things if we do things the right way. And then the last thing is gonna be down here. So I'm gonna go down to, in fact, I probably have an image called makeup somewhere. Notice again, this widget, this bottom part, I did not pull out because I thought it was gonna be small. And notice in the last video and this video as well, it's causing me more problems. It's harder to find things than it is in the image tiles. In the image tiles, I can find things straight away. It's so easy to change everything, to make the changes I need, but Anything which isn't pulled out, when I don't pull out the widgets, it's so much more difficult to do everything. Uh, but leaving that aside, 
So I think this one is going to be shave4.png. Refresh. And this is a bit wider, so it's going to go over. So I'll need to do the same thing here, where I'll wrap it in a container and give my container a height of whatever height I had here. And a width of, and I'm not sure what I should use, maybe constraints.max width, let's try point 0.2. Point 0.2 is too small, point 0.3 is too big, point 0.25, point 0.24. And of course, we could play around with the different parts as well, the padding and the text and that kind of stuff. But I think for now, this is fine. Um, multi shades, many options available. This, <laughs> this actually works for the shaving kit as well. You can get it in black, or you can get it in uh, brown or white, anything like that. So um, I'm actually going to leave this text. And then we can just change the prices specifically in the image tiles. I could imagine the entire kit going for 75, but I can't imagine the shaving creams for this price. So let's change this to 10 and this to uh, 7.99. Refresh. And yeah, I think that looks good. I think that looks great. So again, the thing I'm really trying to point out here is when you have clean architecture, when you actually split out the relevant information, when you have the, the colors separate, when, you, when you're not just using colors.white everywhere, but you have it in a different location, uh, when you wrap your images with a container, when you're using these relative sizes, instead of just saying height 100 pixels, I'm using constraints.max height. So now as, as things change, Flutter can calculate for me what it needs to change and it can be so easy to change things from one part to the other. Uh, so this time, now that we have everything the way it is here, let me show you how quickly it would be to go back to the previous, uh, previous thing. So I'll start with the first image here, make up one .png. The second image here, make up two .png make up free.png. Then I need to change the text. I can't remember what I said before. Uh, cosmetics that everyone loves. Down to here. Uh, this was make up four.png. Save, refresh. Almost finished. I did make a mistake in one of my image makeup 1.png. And I can't remember the exact colors I was using, so I'm going to go into my previous, uh, a previous file just so I can copy the exact codes. refresh and look at that it took maybe 30 seconds maybe one minute to go from one version to the other and of course there is something to be said for version control git or something like that you could say oh well if you want to go back to a previous version you should just use git but what if we're not going backwards but we're going forward you know we went from this to my shaving example but what if then instead of shaving we decide we want to do uh something about computers or something about motorcycles you know if you do things properly you can just go forward so quickly change everything the the way you want and it doesn't need to be a headache but if you don't do this properly like if i had just used colors dot from rgb zero in every single place then i have to go through and find every single place where i've used it imagine these these buttons for for example and because i pulled them out it's so easy to just change something from the from the bottom but it would be such a headache to make any small change like this, changing a color or the images, if you don't have that clean architecture, if you don't uh, separate things, which is the way we have. 
So guys, please, please do that in your own apps. But that is going to be it for this video. It is the conclusion to this module. So I'm looking forward to the next video where we're going to start learning about states. It's going to be amazing. And I hope you guys will enjoy it as well. In the meantime, myself, Avidius, I'm out.